Ed Milet is one of the fastest growing business personalities who is listed by Forbes as one of the top 50 wealthiest people under 50. He went from being born into a middle class family, becoming broke and having to shower at a public pool to being worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And today we're going to learn his best advice on how to take action on your dreams. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and every morning I bring you a shot of espresso to help you start your day with confidence and believe in yourself more. So good morning, I believe in you, and let's do this. Over to you, Ed Milet. You gotta face your Ray Rays in life. You gotta rise up. You gotta make your dreams a reality and live a damn masterpiece. You know this. Now, here's the thing, a couple things. You gotta make a decision. Listen to me, you gotta make a decision. What's the decision? What's the thing you came here for? Now we're at the moment, the clock is ticking. People say all the time, hey, life is short. Let me tell you something, life can be long. You bury your dreams, you quit this, Life gets long. See, time's relative. Two minutes of you being with your sweetie, doing whatever you like to do with them, that can go by quick, right? What's about the last two minutes on a treadmill? Does that not seem like it goes by for like four hours, right? So if you're enjoying it, it's short. If it's painful, it's long. Life can be long. You want a life that feels like it's flying by. You want a life like I have right now where I go, can I just press pause? Can I just press pause? It's so good, it's so great, it's so rewarding, it's so awesome but I don't really wanna press pause because I know it can get better. So what's the decision? What have you been sitting on? What is it? Is it, people are texting me, hey Ed, I, I submitted my resignation last night, I'm coming full time, I walked away from a six figure job. Is that the decision? Is it the decision to finally get serious? Is it the decision to get licensed? Is it the decision to stop worrying about what people think? Is it the decision to become a great closer? Is it the decision to something in a relationship you have you need to get out or into? But I know this, it's only a thought if you don't take an action. The difference between a thought and a decision is an action. So we know and you know you just decided and you know what it is. You know what it is. You will have really decided if within this next hour you took some step towards it. Something. A note you write. A text you send. A, a, a decision you've made. Something you do that you follow up with the action to make it real. Ideas alone aren't enough. Watching this video is not enough. Planning, strategizing, thinking alone aren't enough. You need to do. If you're overthinking that idea and you're not taking enough action, that dream of yours that could build a great life for yourself, change the world, that dream of yours is gonna die within you. And I wanna change that in this video. So I used to force myself into action by thinking about regret. I used to tell myself that this thing that I'm afraid of, if I don't do it, I'm gonna regret it for the rest of my life. I used to tell myself this story of, if you have a hangnail, it really hurts, but then somebody punches you in the arm, you don't feel the hangnail anymore because you feel the punch to the arm. So I would punch myself in the arm, the equivalent of imagining 50, 60, 70 more years of just regret and deep regret if I don't take action versus the pain of actually doing the thing. Because the thing that you wanna do is scary. There is pain associated with it. And the future pain of regret is so far away, you can't really quantify it. So it's saying, okay, another day, don't worry, another day, it'll be another day. And then you look back, it's been a year, two years, 10 years. And so I would try to condense that in today to say, no, if I, if I don't do this thing right now, if I don't make this video, if I don't make that call, if I don't talk to that person, if I don't say yes to this opportunity, I will regret it my entire life. It'll be the biggest wasted opportunity of all time and I'll hate myself. <laughs> That's what I would do to myself constantly and that would force me into action mode. I've actually shortcut that uh, more recently, maybe the past two years, I was on a podcast with my friend Mark and he said, you don't really talk about that anymore. It's like, huh, because I don't really do that anymore. That was really helpful for a good chunk of my life. But now I just go from idea to action. I just, whenever I get an idea, I don't even think anymore. The fact that I came up with the idea means I have to go off and do it. I take the thinking part out of it. What most people do is overthink. You get an idea, you get excited, then you overthink. I, oh, what's the perfect first step? And how do I fund this? And how do I get started? And, and what are people gonna say? And uh, overthink, 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 and then zero doing. 
the forcing to regret can push you into action, but it's still thinking. You have to think about the regret that you're gonna have if you don't take action. So you need to catch it and then think about it and then flip it. I've shook at that entire process by not even thinking about it anymore. The fact that I thought about it means I have to do it. And that, and, and I think that's the path to actually live in a life with no regrets. If you took action of things that you were thinking about, and of course you're thinking about things that are positive and good and within your ethics and moral code, right? If you're in a really upset, negative, nasty mood and you get an idea, okay, don't go take action on that. But the ideas I'm talking about when you're feeling bold and confident and powerful and alive and the best of you, the ideas that come to you when it's the best of you are the things that you should be doing. And then you convince yourself all the reasons why you can't do it, right? Your head keeps you small, practical, safe, not going off and doing the scary thing. And so I wanted to share my story because I think either of those can'ts might fit for you to tell yourself, I'm gonna have tons of regret if I don't do it, or just to default to thinking your ideas are great and take immediate action because the end goal is to have a life with no regrets because you're taking action on those great ideas that you have. So I'm gonna give you a three-step process that I think will help to get you out of perfectionist mode and into action mode. But before that, here's a special message from Ed. I love the book by my brother Evan Carmichael, Built to Serve You Guys. This is the kind of thing you get in this book. Most people wake up and drive to a job they hate. Think about your five closest friends. Are they happy? Do they live their lives with purpose? Do you? We put on a fake front for what we want people to see and think about us, but the reality is most people aren't happy. We're lost, we settle. You can't be happy if you don't know your purpose. And then he goes on to explain how to do that. You guys should get this book, Built to Serve, by my dear friend, Evan Carmichael. Okay, three steps. Three steps to get out of your own head, to get out of your own way and into action mode, let's go. Step number one is assume your ideas are awesome. Assume your ideas are awesome. We've defaulted to thinking that ideas suck, that they're not good enough, that we're not good enough, that we're not capable, that we can't do it, that it's never gonna work out. This is our head constantly telling ourselves to be small, to be quiet, to don't take a risk, to not bet on ourselves. And I wanna flip it. Default, learn to default that your ideas are amazing, that you are amazing, that the fact that you came up with it means that it's amazing that you may not understand where it came from. This is making decisions with your heart, right? Big decisions with the heart, small ones with the head. If you try to wrap your head around this, this is an expression we use, right? Wrap your head around it. No, wrap your heart around it. Your heart can create something that's never existed before. Your head only understands a practical world that currently exists. Your heart's gonna create something brand new, but your heart doesn't make sense. Where your ideas come from, if it's coming from a place of, of strength and boldness and confidence, and it's a big idea, your head's gonna say, well, that's not possible. Because right now it's not, because it hasn't been done before. You haven't done it, nowhere even close. So to try to think it through, you've already lost. Because it's an idea that came from your heart. And so it's learning to trust that. The fact that you thought of it means it's amazing because you're amazing. Default to thinking that your ideas are awesome. Step number two is go from idea to action. So this is again, what I've defaulted a lot to in the past two years has led to crazy upside, insane success, faster than my growth for maybe the last 20 years of my life um, because I just go from idea to action. So trust your ideas are awesome. And then what are you gonna do to start with it right now? If you're watching this video, you, you're feeling some energy and some confidence kind of start to bubble up inside. You're like, hey, this is my time. I gotta go do something, great. Like carry that energy and then do. What's the do? What's the action? What's the idea that you've got? And what's the smallest step you can take right now to start actually building some momentum towards it? Not thinking, not planning, not watching another video, doing. What's the doing? Teaching yourself. I come with an idea, it's amazing, I implement. I implement, I implement, I implement, I implement. The only thing you're missing is momentum. You gotta implement. And that comes from going idea to action every single time. And then step number three is the regret minimization framework. And I took that from Jeff Bezos and he tried to basically live a life with no regrets and he, he called it the regret minimization framework. And if idea to action isn't helping you uh, as quickly as you'd like, then try to imagine yourself being 95 years old, you're sitting on a rocking chair, you're looking back on this moment and you say, back in 2020, back in 2021, back in 2022, whenever you're watching this video, I had a chance. I, had a ch I could have done something special. Back then I had a chance to do something, I had a great idea, I had the energy, I could have done it. And I convinced myself of a BS excuse why I couldn't do it, but really I was just afraid. And imagine now being 95 years old, and it's actually too late. 
You know, your, your mind's going, your body's breaking down. You can't actually do it anymore. How painful it was to now have decades of that regret weighing on top of you that you didn't take action because you were just afraid. And you found the really logical reason to stay small, but deep down, you were just plain afraid. And feel the pain and feel the weight and use that to not let another day go by. Use that to do something right now. If that's painful at all, if you've got ideas that you're sitting on and that's painful at all, don't let another day go by. Increase the urgency at which you take your life. That your life is important. That it's meaningful. That today matters, not tomorrow. Today, it matters. Trust that idea that it's amazing. Do something about it. Because otherwise, you will live a life full of regret. I want to change it. And I hope this video helped inspire you. Now, I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're going to enjoy. But before that, question of the day, I want to know, what is one action you want to take today that's going to help you live a more inspired life? You're going to do something on one of your ideas. What is the thing you're going to do today? Put it down in the comments below. And if you're still here watching, I want to celebrate you. Believe Nation, we don't just watch videos, right? We don't just watch another video, move on with our day. We take action and change the world. If that's you, give me a hashtag. Believe in the comments below. I want to celebrate you. What make, made you believe that you can change an entire country or change things in an entire country in a place where you were, I've especially been told that I can't do it? And when did that happen? Uh, you know, I was dropped on my head as a child. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I didn't have any sense. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think this actually, uh, connects with, with Yara's earlier question about, about how do we sustain a movement. You know, there's, a, there's a corollary to that, which is how do we sustain our own sense of hope and drive and vision and motivation? Um, and how do we dream big? Uh, and for me, at least, I, it was not a straight line. It wasn't a steady progression. Mm -hmm. It was an evolution that took place over time as I tried to align what I believed most deeply with what I saw around me and with my own actions. One of the things that I used to do trainings for community organizers, uh, and we used to uh, tell folks if you want to know what your values are right now, look at where you're putting your time, your money, your energy. Mm -hmm. You may tell yourself that you are really community-minded, but if all your time, money, and energy is going into going to the club or uh, playing sports, then that's actually what's important to you. Now, what happens is I, you know, as a young man, I've, I've said before uh, that I was kind of a goof off. When I was your age, I was not sitting on the stage talking <laughs> in some serious voice about <laughs> you know, I was out there trying to get with some girl or playing basketball or, you know, doing things I shouldn't have been doing. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what started happening was that I would read, let's say, about Nelson Mandela and the struggles in South Africa. And I'm in a class, and I'm raising my hand, and I've got some opinion. Or a representative of the, the African National Congress would come to campus, and they were my age, and they're risking potentially getting thrown in jail, or they're in exile, trying to struggle. And I'm saying to myself, hmm, if I really do believe in that, then what am I doing about it? Yeah. And what am I willing to give up? And what am I willing to sacrifice? And so there was this long process for me of aligning what I said I believed in with my behavior and then testing 
what I could change so that the world would align better with what I believed in and my values. If you want to know how Ed Milet outworks everyone, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.